Tjena, Haven XHV is in my opinion one of the most exciting projects in the entire crypto industry, Bitcoin included. Now it's down from a high of $30 down to $2 yesterday. So is it over? Is this legendary saga over and it's time to pack up and go home or what is going on? I will go into great detail over what my analysis is and what I think could happen from here. A lot of things have happened at once. If you don't know what it is, I recommend to first watch this video where I introduce the project and then come back here and watch this one. First came this announcement, successful vulnerability patch on June 24. Yesterday morning it came to our attention that there's been an attempted exploit on the Haven protocol the actions taken and how we were able to prevent a successful exploit. We would like to thank our pool operators for their first work in applying this update. So here was a vulnerability discovered and nothing happened. Nothing was exploited, no funds were taken. And if you've been in this space for some time or in any software development, you know that problems going to arise. It's how you handle it, it's how you respond, it's if you respond that matters. There's been exploits in basically all the major protocols, Bitcoin included, if you've been here for a while. This was a five-star handling. A community member notified the team, they implemented a patch, they released it, they contacted the mining pools who introduced the patch before anything could happen. This handling actually increased my confidence in the project. So what does this have to do with anything? Well, of course, there could be some people who are confused, they think it's a problem, they don't really understand this, and they sell and exit. It could be like that, but it could also be that this doesn't have so much to do with the recent price crash, because there is something else happening also, which is unrelated to this, happening at the same time. I posted on Twitter yesterday. This guy here had a good thread and he writes, a recent upgrade to launch XBTC allowed for an enterprise whale, meaning a big whale, to spot the Oracle offered a time lag on the BTC USD price. This enabled close to risk-free speculation for mining between XUSD and XBTC. Rather than a bug, it's more that it's a moving average, meaning that if price moves quickly in one direction, you pretty much know where the moving average will follow. And then if we go into this site, havenx.io, we can check here for big trades and we can see sure enough there are some million dollar trades here to XBTC and back. Now I just filtered on one direction but they go in both directions. And this gentleman from the project clarified that this is a separate issue. XBTC issue is that the unlock is too short, it needs to be much longer so that they can't really do this kind of trade. That is an easy fix and it will be out sooner than people expect. And I like this, we're also unlikely to announce when we do it. If someone is in the middle of a trade which they have an unfair advantage on when we do it, fine, not our problem. Savage. And then this gentleman writes, unfortunately they decided to cash out at a time where the overall crypto market is extremely weak. And that would then explain why the price is going down. Now here is where I'm not so sure, I think there could be another explanation also. If we look at this site, there are still big trades here, weren't they supposed to have cashed out? Now I'm going to show you something here on the KuCoin chart, on the one minute chart. Now I'm the guy who looks at the weekly or at most daily charts. I never look at one minute chart, but this time I will because I will show you something that I think is a little bit telling. If you look at what happened yesterday, you see that they were dumping hard in a one minute candle. So they dumped, price went back up, they dumped down, price went back up. They dumped down, price went back up higher, they dumped down again, up, dumped down, dumped down, dumped down, dumped down. And to me, this would not be a good exit strategy. If you want to exit, you want to exit with as much money as possible, right? You don't want to damage the price, because then when you sell you get less money. If their plan was to exit, why rush it? Why not take it slowly, sell gently, try not to affect the price, and sell at as high price as possible? Here it looks like they are trying to get the price down. Otherwise, why would they do that? Look here, price is back higher than it was when they sold here. Why damage the price like this? That seems irrational, right? Well, there could be a very rational reason for doing that. And if you remember my previous video, I did warn about this. Let's go back and watch what I said. And what are the problems? Because there are some. Small size is never good. Big is good. A mined proof of work coin can't be too small because it can be 51% attacked. But with XHV, there is a possibly even bigger problem and that is inflation manipulation. If order books are small or thin on exchanges, it's cheap to manipulate price there. 
And since there is no slippage on Haven protocol, you can do things like this. First, you convert 100,000 XHV to 1 million XUSD at XHV price $10. Then you dump the price to $5 on exchanges. That doesn't cost much if order books are thin. Then you convert back on the Haven protocol and now you have 200,000 XHV. Then you drive the price back up to $10 again on exchanges and you start the loop all over again. So if they remove their X assets on Haven to XUSD or XBTC, doesn't really matter, something comparably more stable like either of those two, on the Haven vault. And then on exchanges, they press down the price from 20 to two. And then they mint back to XHV. They would get 10 times as many XHV, right? Because there is no slippage when you're minting. So even if you mint $5 million, $10 million worth of XHV, you're not going to get any slippage. So that could be a scheme then to get 10 times as many XHV. And what would be the most rational thing to do after that? It would be to drive the price back up and then mint back there and then potentially repeat this again if it doesn't cause too much damage to the reputation. So I think it's at least possible that there is a second half of this manipulation game going on here. And I think it's extremely exciting, extremely, extremely exciting to see what will happen with this. Now I'm excited because I think that this is exciting technology. I think this is an exciting experiment. It's something that has never been done before in the world. Not in before crypto, the technology didn't exist. And within crypto, no one has done this before. This is completely new ground. And who knows what will happen? I don't know. And for clarity also, I don't have any inside information here. I don't have any other information than what is available to everyone. I'm just trying to share my thoughts and insights and conclusions with the hope that it provides some value to you. Nothing of this is financial advice or anything like that. But if you want to invest or trade in something like this, how do you even approach something that can be manipulated? There's all these kind of supply complications and yeah, what to do, how to even relate to this. First, I want to draw your attention to something. The dump that happened yesterday, it coincidentally they actually went to this support line. I didn't draw this support line yesterday. It came all the way from this triangle breakout over here in January. So technical analysis, support and resistance worked even in this crazy situation. Front run a little bit, but not much. And if you look back on the chart, it's a textbook technical analysis. We had the parabola starting all the way in September 2019, going up, going up, going up. And then it was broken around here in April 2021 just a little over a month ago, when the market conditions changed. And then, as you can see, it went into a different market structure. The next top did not reach the previous top in terms of US dollar value. Then it went down into a rectangle, which broke out on the downside. The main signal was really here on the, on the break of the parabola. And then the dump followed, coming all the way down here to $2.8. I'm showing you this chart because it has the longest price history, but the selling didn't happen there. The selling happened here on KuCoin. You can see that because the price went down much further here, and that was also where there were those strange kind of volume spikes. And here price went all the way down to $2 yesterday. On the BTC chart, it's very similar. Price almost hit down to a very key support line. Probably there was some support here that's being front run a little. And again, this line I didn't draw yesterday. This is a line that we had all the way back from last year, I think. And then it hit here, it hit here, went up, and then it hit here again. And again on KuCoin, it reached even further down. But here you don't have the price history, so you don't see that. But you can see it if we compare the price. Here hit 9K and here hit 6K. Okay, so I feel that this first part was important to understand because I feel that there is a possibility that there is a second half of this game coming that hasn't started yet. But of course, it could be that they are just simply exiting. But then why are those big trades still going on? But then going forward, there is potentially a more interesting question, and that is, are they done? Or do they have more to sell? Looking at the chart, this is definitely capitulation volume down here. So judging from this chart, I would say that this was the bottom, they are done, this was the capitulation. But there is one other aspect to consider. Remember I told you that the selling was happening on KuCoin. And they have currently closed the deposit and withdrawal services of Haven Protocol because of the hard fork upgrade, which is the hard fork to fix some of these other issues. So unless they had already deposited their XHV, maybe they can't send them in right now. 
So that means that we don't know if they have stopped because they have finished selling or if they have stopped because the right now they can't deposit. And as soon as this fork opens, they can continue to deposit and they can continue trying to crash the price if that is their objective or just selling because they are planning to exit. So I think some redness for both scenarios is probably warranted here. Then I want to say something else. I saw someone wrote in the chat that, oh, I bought this at 28, now it's at 2.8, I'm completely wrecked. Now I feel sorry for that guy. I cannot teach everyone trading and investing here in a 10 minute video, but I, I can lay out something that you can at least avoid a big trap. First, you have to decide, are you an investor or are you a trader? If you're an investor, you know that most tech startups, which all crypto projects are a type of, most of them will fail. 90% will fail, 10% maybe will make it if you have made extremely good picks from the beginning. And it is those 10% that's gonna make up for all the 90% that don't make it. Projects can fail for a variety of reasons. Maybe the founder decides to move to a deserted island with his girlfriend. Maybe he has some personal problems. Maybe there's a problem in the code. Maybe someone runs away with a password. Maybe they get burned out. Maybe the idea didn't work. There's a thousand and one ways that something can fail. That's why you don't find any VCs in Silicon Valley that only invest in one company. They invest in many companies and they know that most of that isn't going to work out. And if you are an investor and you only invest in one company, by probability, 90% you're going to lose all the money. It's like a fakir, the yoga guy that lays on a bed of nails. You're a beginner fakir, you start with one nail. Now, you need many nails to hold you up. Or you're a trader and if you're a trader you can never be in that situation. You can never be in a situation that you buy a 28 and you hold it all the way down to 2.8. Now if you bought a 28 you would have had the stop loss, you would have taken the stop loss, you taken a small loss, got out and try again to get in. That's what the trader would do. Then if you are following neither of these strategies, you are neither an investor nor a trader. Then my suggestion would be to educate yourself a little bit about the basics of this craft which is trading and investing because that is not so easy as it seems at first. And especially for a project like this that is not only a kind of a tech startup but is also trying a completely new monetary concept. If you watched my previous video remember I talked about that there are 10 types of money. This is like a 10th type that is a concept that's following after Bitcoin. And then on top of that there is also this mint burn strategy which could potentially fluctuate the price even more, maybe two orders of magnitude, meaning 100 times up, 100 times down, 1000 times up, 10,000 times up, 10,000 times down. Who knows how this will play out? Now even the fire truck is out to save us. I am as excited about this project than ever. There is clearly some very advanced manipulation. There are bigger players who have taken notice of this project. Some are petty, some are big, ideologically driven people like Eric for Hears. I think it's even more exciting than it was a couple of months ago. Price is down. Who knows what's going to happen next? And my analysis from the very beginning stands the same. This project is either going to go to zero, it's not going to work out, or it's going to go 10,000 times up. There is nothing in between, guys. There is nothing in between. I hope you enjoyed this short update. I hope it will help you in some way. Thank you, Tak. City of Larson out. Hey,